Hello everybody and welcome back to the second tutorial about the sheep modes. So we have, as we said, the first one in the first tutorial, the movement mode or the travel mode, better, because your engines actually have three different speeds, three different top speeds. One is the normal thing, which is basically that you just go and it gets about 200 for this one, 243. Okay, that's the one. The other one is the boost mode, which is by pressing tab, and it's much faster, but it eats away at your shields. There's the third mode, which is by actually accessing the ship mode, which is shift one. That's the travel. It takes a bit to charge, and then whoop, you start accelerating and going and going and going until the maximum travel mode speed. That is basically independent to each machine every every engine has its own travel speed obviously the travel type engines have the highest rating for travel speed this one goes to 4000 but i'm already there as you can see so this is a very fast way to travel another thing to note is that in order to stop very very quickly you just press backspace otherwise if you don't and you just keep on going while you are in travel mode then what will happen because Every mode can be disabled, not just switch to another one, you just disable the mode you're in. So pressing shift one again just cancels that and then I keep on going for a long time. Just letting whatever inertia or physics this game has about slowing you down on its own. Or just backspace and you immediately stop. But let's go back to the station now. So again, shift one, activate it, shift one, deactivate. It's just as easy as that. Pressing tab just a little bit before will also give you a small boost so you can enter it much more quickly. Otherwise, when it activates, it will just start you from the maximum of your normal engine speed. Obviously, when you're traveling, you're very, very slow to change directions. And that's all about shift one, travel mode. It's that simple. Use it to go fast. There is one more detail about that. If you are actually shot during the travel mode, you will stop, get out of it, and you can also shoot yourself. The idea being that if somebody tries to get away from you using travel mode, you can actually, if you're faster than them, catch up to them, shoot them, and then that will take them out of travel mode, basically being interdicted by you. But the same thing applies to you, so watch out so that you don't get shot. Second mode is shift 2, which is your scan mode. See how some things look differently now? This is how your factories will look. Every, basically the different segments of every factory will have their own color. Yellow is for docks and piers. Red is for administration. Greenish is for storage. And blue is for the habitats. There is another use of this mode, which is basically what allows you to take a look at the various data leaks that you can find on various modules. Data leaks are the things that will give you the missions or discounts, or if you actually research them, you will get modules. When you research all of those, then if you research production module hack, then you will be able to scan those data leaks of a production module and have a chance to actually gain the blueprint. The difference with... You can find the data leaks on your own without having data uh, mode on. However, if you switch on data mode, then they will be a little bit more easy to find. So, we came here to find a signal. We heard something, we're trying to look at it, and we don't see anything. But we heard something, we know we heard something. But I don't see anything no matter where I look. So, I turn on scanning mode, look again. Oh, big red thing flashing. That's easier to see now, isn't it? So, with scanning on, we can attempt to approach this very, very close. However, there is actually right now the belief that scanning this data leak with the scan mode open is much easier to get the decryption of it. However, 
whatever it may hold. There is also the belief that you can use actually your sh your space shoots scan mode to have a better chance at decryption and getting the things you want. Because your spacesuit has also shift 2. It's the same thing, see? You still see the red, now you don't. This is your spacesuit's scan mode, so you approach it as you approach everything else, as you would in your ship. You just approach it, you hear it, you hear it, and once you get close enough to it in your spacesuit, it will start to scan it. There. Unlocked Blueprint, Argon Disk Defense Platform. This is basically the first time I'm getting out to, to decrypt stuff like that in my spacesuit and I've already have a decrypted thing because I don't have that. I don't have that blueprint. And there you go. I don't even have the research, which also shows us something else important. This just increases your chance. You don't actually need that, which is awesome. So let me just get back to my ship. And that is scan mode. For stations at least. Another thing you can use scan mode for is to plan your attacks. If you are planning on becoming a pirate, then you will need to have scan mode on because then you can just take go after a craft like that, right click on it and select scan, which does this. And now all these information becomes available before they were question marks let's do this again this right click scan if i'm not in scan mode i cannot scan and everything is available for me to see that means from all the normal ships that i want to attack i can also have information such as marines crew cargo weapons so that you can plan your attacks much better. One final thing that the scan mode is useful for is taking a look at what's inside the asteroid field. If you are inside an asteroid field, then just scan mode will tell you this one has nothing, this one is ore, and this one is silicon. So you can have a visual representation of what the asteroid around you are doing. Of course, with the number of uh, scanners in the game, there's strengths associated with them. The basic scanner is your weakest one and the least chance to get a blueprint. Your police scanner is the next best one. It has the much greater chance of getting information of data leaks. Your spacesuit scanner is the next power up uh, you have a greater chance of getting blueprints and then the advanced spacesuit scanner is the best chance you have of getting these blueprints. The last mode we are going to discuss is the long range scanner. Long range scanner is what you use to find out exactly what's around you. Find stuff that you don't know yet, such as this thing. All we know is this is an unknown station because I have scanned for this. But let's just go here and see what we can find. How does this work? After that rude interruption, we can continue into the final, we are going to demonstrate mode today, the long range scan mode. 
Shift 3 and everything turns blue. Now, we will be scanning your inventory. I don't care. So basically what I'm doing is looking at this. Why this is important I will discuss in a bit. But basically the pulse of the scan is moving towards the front. As you will see visually from that. See, it's kind of moving ahead. And that is fairly true. It has found this, which is in front of me. That's granted. However, if there was any big station like this one behind me, that would also work. The pulse is actually 360 degrees, but only 360 degrees for large objects such as gates and space stations. The range is, as you will see, close to 200. If I remember correctly, it is about 200. That's the range. Yep, it's 200 kilometers. Within 200 kilometers of you, everything will be, everything big enough will be detected. However, there are also objects in the game which are small, such as lock boxes and other things that are going to be surprises. I don't want to spoil them. But lockboxes are pretty much well known right by now. Lockboxes then are not going to be found just by scanning somewhere and find them. You have to scan all over. So we scanned that way and that's what we got. So now let's go to the X and do another scan. The scan, by the way, is done by pressing the R button and keeping it pressed for about two seconds. Two seconds is the close to maximum time you will be able to scan for. If you press R for more than the two seconds, then this is what will happen. Uh -uh. You get an uh -uh sound, which means no, I'm not gonna do it, you overloaded me. So just press R, keep it for two, press, two seconds pressed and then let go. So let's go to the Z, because so far there's nothing else we have found, is there? Nope, that's it. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Anything else? Nope. Nothing else. Okay, let's move that way. And nothing else. So now we can be sure that around us, within 200 kilometers, nothing exists that is of any significant value. If there was, we would have another question mark somewhere here indicating that something was found by the scan. Since we don't, we can be assured that there is nothing else and we can go and look another direction. Last thing we need to discuss about the long range scan is about how it looks like when you have a rich environment of targets found. So that can only be seen and heard, so I'm gonna raise the sound for that. Listen as much as see what happens when I do scan. See all that? Let's do that again. Boom. And then cluck cluck cluck. Ran it here. And a blue. So every little ping you hear is something found. Something bounced back. Like a sonar from a submarine. The circle color around them denotes something. When it is grey it is stuff, general stuff that you will, f that can be anything from a ship to a station to asteroids to anything. Specifically, if the ring is blue, then that means it's a wreck or an uncommon block box. If it is yellow, then it is an explosive asteroid or rare lock boxes. If it is purple, go and find out what it is. Finally, when the scan hits a nebula, then it turns into that blue thing that we see at the end. Yes, it's all blue, but it's not exactly that. 
see how it turns blue that so that's the end of the long range gun that's all it was turning it back off as with everything else you can and the final mode of the ship is shift 4 which I don't have because that is seated drive which stands for singularity engine time accelerator which basically makes you experience time faster while you're in your ship time seems to pass normally but everything else in the entire universe goes six times as fast technically that means you are slowed down and the rest of the universe is just at normal speed but whatever the interpretation you want to give it from a physics point of view the point is that everything around you speeds up six times so you can just have that time to wait for another ship to be produced cut down six times instead of waiting six minutes or 60 minutes you wait one minute or 10 minutes which is i think of value and that is all about the ship modes and i hope you learned something found it useful and as always keep safe